I'm going to go ahead and save this again and call this example five. Now we're going to take a look at the table tags. Now, if you're new to HTML, so now if you're if you're new to HTML, and but you've read a little bit about it, you might read that table tags are bad, um, and and that can be true in the sense of of using them for layouts. In in the way way distant past, uh, us web designers, web developers. Before CSS, we would use tables to align elements on a page, paragraphs, images, things like that, to you know make the page look kind of fancy. We don't do that anymore. We use uh, other tags and, and CSS to, to create that effect. However, a table is still good for a table. If you need to make a table of something, um, that is the perfect tag to use. So don't be afraid to use them, just uh, stray away from using them for layouts. So this is an example that goes a little deeper than the lists do as far as the elements involved in a table. So to start a table, similar to the list, we need to declare that it's going to be a table. So we start out with our table tag. And uh, again, I'm going to kind of boost this up here. Um, the first thing we need to add to a table tag is a table row or a TR tag. So let's go ahead and tab out. Again, you don't have to tab things, but uh, when doing code, formatting them like this, just simple tabs and, and you know line breaks uh, really makes your code a lot easier to read. So we're going to do a TR, and inside of this table row, we need columns. Now there's a couple different column types. There's a heading column or a header column and a, a regular column. This is going to be our header. So we're going to put a TH tag. It stands for table header. And what we're going to do here is we're going to just make a simple table that lists some of the tags we've talked about. We'll just use that as an example. So our, our heading, which is going to be in the first row, is tag. And the second column, what it is. So if we go ahead, right now we have a table built. It's a simple table and it's missing some of the stuff that we want to put in it. But if I go ahead and save this, and we flip over to our browser. Again, if you're following along, make sure you change your file name up there. And there you go. You have our heading here. Now this is not really looking like a table, so this is not a good example so far. We're going to go ahead and do something here that we haven't done yet. We're going to add what, what's called a parameter or some called an attribute. Uh, you might hear different uh, names for a property, etc. Inside the first tag, the opening tag. And remember that if you're going to add these attributes or parameters, they need to be in the first tag, the opening tag. And it's going to be before the greater, sign, greater than sign and after the tag name. So we hit space and we're going to say border equals one. And remember to put those in quotes. The property, you have the property or the attribute uh, parameter. Um, I'm probably going to throw those names out in <laughs> some order or another. Um, but you, you have the property here and you have the value here. The value needs to be in quotes. So save that. Check out our page here. And there you go. This really amazing looking border there. Um, again, kind of like the horizontal rule. Uh, we, we like to utilize CSS to make these tables not look so 1990s uh, website. Uh, but now you can see we've got a table with two columns and the way I can tell right here that it's a heading is that it's automatically made it bold. So let's add some some other rows and, and columns or cells, however you want to word that. So we'll create another row. And we'll note here that if it's not obvious yet, HTML reads from you know, top to bottom. So if we want the row to come beneath this, we need to put the row tags beneath the one above it. So we also need to make sure that our column count 
matches what's above. Otherwise, our table gets all screwy. Uh, and what I've done here is I've made a TD tag. Uh, for the life of me, I don't know why it's TD. Um, I could probably look that up and answer that. I think it's table data, maybe. Um, but uh, think of it as a, another cell or a, a, a column. So the first tag we talked about was the, the P tag. So we'll put a P in there. And another column. what it is. Again, how you space this stuff out is kind of up to you. There are some standards to it, um, but uh, you kind of adapt your own way of doing it. So now when we save this and take a look at it, it's going to start looking more and more like a table. All right, and refresh, F5, and there you go. So let's go ahead and add a couple more. And to kind of speed things up, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and paste another one below here. And we'll change this to a break tag or line break. And say this is a line break. Um, save that. Now what might have looked nicer is if I actually put these in here as tags. You know, put the uh, less than greater sign around them. However, the browser is going to read these as tags, and it's going to see this paragraph tag and see that it doesn't have a closing tag, which can break our code. Um, and another example here would be with the break tag. If I go ahead and save this now, how it is. And we take a look, looks good. However, if I turn this into a break tag to, you know, because that, that would look nicer in our, our little table there to show what the tag actually looks like. Let me save that. We look at that. Well, our tag is going to go away because it's going to read it as HTML, not text. So that's important to note. Now, there are ways of getting around that, um, but for this example, we're going to keep it simple. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a couple more in here. And we'll do And again, just take a look at what we got going on here. So there's our table, real simple. Um, something else I'll show you here really quick. Um, and this again is something that a lot of times we'll end up using CSS for, but since we're just talking HTML, it's good to know that this exists. I'm gonna add another property here and we're gonna do cell padding. And this is gonna kind of create a buffer between what's in the cell or the, the column and the border around it. And whether the border is visible or not, if we turn that border off, we took that property out, it's still going to put some buffer in between each column. So we're going to put um, the number four here. So we're going to give it a padding of four. And this is going to, it's important to note, it's going to go all the way around the, uh, the text in the cell. Save that, take a look, and there you go. It's kind of looking a little better here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually boost that up to something a little bigger, and we'll put one more property in here, which is cell spacing. And this is actually 
going to be between the cells. Um, so this is kind of a, a look into some things you're going to learn in CSS with uh, padding and margins. Um, in this instance, think of the padding as kind of the, um, in this instance, think of padding as padding, but think of cell spacing as what you're going to, you're going to use margin for uh, in the future in CSS. So padding is kind of within the cell between the, the text and the, the border, and then the spacing is between the border and the next cell. So if I put a cell spacing of, say, 20 in here, it's going to look ridiculous, but uh, I should give you an example. So this is what we end up with. Um, so you can see we have this, this buffer between the text and the uh, border, and then buffer between each individual cell. And as usual, we're going to save this, then save it as, and give it a new name. And now we're going to look at what is called the form tags. And we're going to take kind of a basic look into this. Um, because forms generally require a little more than just the HTML. The HTML creates the form, but how it handles the form is a little different. And there's a reason why I keep adding to this document, which you're going to see here uh, soon enough. So down here, underneath the table, let's go ahead and create a form. So we start out similar to the table. We want to declare this is going to be a form. So all of the form elements for this particular form are going to go in here. And if you're not quite sure what a form is, you will be once we take a look at it in the browser. So again, we're not going to go through every single element in a form, but we're going to look at some of the basics. Uh, most basic is a simple input field. Um, which is another example of a tag that's a single tag. Uh, however, we need some properties in here. First property is going to be the type of input. And that's going to be text. So it's just a simple text field. We want to give it a name, which this name is pretty much up to us. This is going to be something you're going to use later when the form uh, is processed, when something happens, when somebody hits submit or OK. Uh, this is how you refer back to the data or whatever somebody typed into the field. So we'll just call this first name. And then we're going to give it a size. Uh, this is something that a lot of times is replaced with CSS. Um, pretty much anything having to do with formatting. Um, many times we're going to use CSS to to do that instead of HTML. Uh, it's still important to know how to write it in HTML. So size, and we're going to say 40, and that stands for 40 characters. A lot of times, um, most times, you're going to be using units like pixels uh, by default, um, or, or EMs or points, or however you want to do it. Most times it's going to be pixels. For me, it's the graphic design background. Pixels make more sense to me than some of those other um, but in this okay, but in this case it's going to be characters. How many characters can fit in this box? Now, this particular property uh, is how many characters can fit in the box that you can see. That doesn't mean that you can't put more more than forty characters in there. You can just only see forty at a time. If we want to actually limit that, we're going to do a max length of forty as well, and then that'll stick to 40 but let's go ahead and take a look at this really quick just to see what we're getting into so let's take a look in the browser and change this to example 6 scroll on down here and there you can barely see it there's our form our little entry form here simple text field and it's limited to 40 characters so there at this point we've hit 40 characters um, now this isn't uh, a real good example yet, so let's go back to our HTML. 